everybody, Dr. Hagmeyer here, and today I want to talk to you about seven ways birth control pills cause depression and anxiety. If this is your first time to my YouTube channel, I want to welcome you here. Um, you know, this was really on my heart to do this video today because I work with so many women, young women especially, uh, that suffer with anxiety and depression. And so I wanted to put this video together just to help you understand more about the causes behind anxiety and depression. You know, the numbers are just staggering. You know, if we look at some of the latest studies, 40 million Americans suffer with anxiety and 18 million suffer with depression. Now, those numbers to me are, are kind of just numbers. So I had to think about that a little bit. And so to give those numbers some meaning, um, I looked up some of the biggest cities in the United States, New York City obviously being the biggest. And as of 2018, New York City has a population of 8 million 622,000 people. I want you to imagine five New York cities where every single person in that city is walking around with, with anxiety, right? I want you to imagine two New York cities where every single person is walking around with depression. These numbers are unacceptable. And while there are a variety of reasons for depression and for anxiety, I want to share with you several ways birth control pills will either cause depression, anxiety, or they will prevent you from overcoming the depression and anxiety that you experience. These things that I'm going to be sharing with you today and through today's video are by no means a new discovery. You know, the medical community is well aware of these problems. It's unfortunate uh, in that just most doctors today refuse to discuss these issues and investigate these issues because it's a whole lot easier to write a prescription for an antidepressant or an anti-anxiety pill, right? Let's face it, writing a prescription takes all of about five minutes to do and saves the insurance company lots and lots and lots of money. But this is not what healthcare should be, right? Healthcare and what's best for you should never be dictated by what insurance companies determine, right? So in today's video, seven ways birth control pills will cause depression. You're going to learn about something called oxidative stress what it is, uh, what it does, how oxidative stress is tied into mental health and depression, how we test for it. Uh, I'll show you examples of some of the medical studies showing the link between depression and anxiety and mental disorders and, and that oxidative stress. You're going to learn how the pill affects testosterone levels and why testosterone is so important for women who suffer with depression, especially if you're fatigued and you lack libido and you uh, have a generally just a lack of stamina um, throughout your day. You're going to learn how the pill affects thyroid levels and the connection between low thyroid and depression. We'll get into the effects uh, the pill has on serotonin levels, uh, which is one of our feel-good chemicals made in the brain and in the gut. Um, then we'll get into some of the effects uh, the pill has on um, things like happiness and mood and social behavior, uh, how you experience pain. Again, some of those things being tied into serotonin levels. I'll also spend some time explaining the relationship between the pill and copper levels and the role that copper plays in depression and anxiety. And finally, you're going to learn about the connection between the pill and how it's tied into inflammation and surprisingly how it's also tied into blood sugar handling. All of these problems that we're going to be talking about can be induced by the pill. Um, and of course, if you or a loved one is not getting better and possibly um, why your mental health is further, you know, deteriorating year after year. So one of the most important things I want you to realize, um, if, especially if you're taking notes, and if you are, this is something that you want to write down, is that number one, when it comes to treating any chronic health problem, we have to look at the big picture, right? We really have to understand that both anxiety and depression have multiple causes. While we're talking about the birth control pill here today, realize that as we go through these things, that there are additional things outside of the pill that can cause oxidative stress and other things that can cause uh, thyroid problems and other things that can cause blood sugar problems. But because so many women um, who have depression and have anxiety are on the birth control pills, I want you to be aware of them. And so that's why we titled today's talk more so about the effects of birth control pills on depression and anxiety, right? Now listen, if depression was caused only by a neurotransmitter shortage, right, uh, then taking things like SSRIs, these selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, Paxil, Prozac, Lexapro, Zoloft, all these antidepressants, or any other variation of, of medication for that matter, if, you, if it was simply just a shortage of these um, neurotransmitters, then these medications would, would obviously fix your depression, and that would be the end of your depression, right? But what do we see? 
uh, that never happens, right? That, that's a lot to unpack here in today's video, but I hope that you'll have a much better appreciation into these topics that we're going to be talking about. Um, and so let's just start unpacking these in today's video, right? But it's my hope that you'll walk away today having a better appreciation uh, about these topics that we're going to be diving into. And so if you or a loved one is suffering with these things, uh, why you should consider also working with a functional medicine doctor, right, to really investigate the potential problems. And also obviously determine uh, a plan that's going to work on healing your brain and healing your body. All right, sound good? All right, let's jump into this and let's get into it. All right, so when you take oral, uh, the pill, transdermal, vaginal contraceptives, there are a number of consequences that doctors in Western medicine typically overlook or just disregard. And it's these details that could possibly change your life forever. So number one and number two is when you take the pill, you're flooding your body with unnatural synthetic hormones. And these synthetic hormones will affect your thyroid and they affect your testosterone levels, both of which can cause depression. By taking the pill using an IUD with hormones or using a patch, all of these can increase something called sex hormone binding globulin, as well as increasing something called thyroid binding globulin. Now, the best way to understand sex hormone binding globulin and thyroid binding globulin is to think of them like taxi cabs, right? Hormones hitch a ride throughout your body by attaching themselves to these protein carriers. These protein carriers are thyroid binding globulin and sex hormone binding globulin. So again, think about them as taxi cab drivers. Sex hormone binding globulin is a protein and it's made in the liver, and it binds very, very tightly to three sex hormones found in both men and in women. The three hormones that it binds very tightly, and this is very important, is estrogen, DHT, or dihydrotestosterone, and finally, testosterone itself. Now, here's why you should ask your doctor to test your sex hormone binding globulin levels, right? Low libido, low sex drive, fatigue, brain fog, trouble focusing, trouble staying on task, hair loss, or more likely your hair is maybe not just growing as fast as it could or should, depression, anxiety. If those symptoms sound familiar, testing your sex hormone binding globulin levels can offer incredible insight into the hormonal imbalances that are associated with an androgen deficiency caused by the pill. Now, androgens are male steroid hormones, and yes, women make them, and they absolutely need them as well. Here's a study from the Journal of Sex Medicine titled The Impact of Oral Contraceptives on Sex Hormone Binding Globulin and Androgen Levels, a retrospective study in women with sexual dysfunction. While so much emphasis in women is placed on the levels of estrogen and progesterone as the main culprits of sexual dysfunction and hormone imbalances, it's easy to overlook testosterone, and it's even easier to overlook DHT. If you look here, I summarize some of the most common symptoms in women that are associated with low testosterone. And I want to show you some testing from a, a recent patient. And the reason I show you this is that this could be happening to you, right? But you'd never know it unless your doctor ran these tests for you. So a, a little background story on this patient of mine. This is a woman in her mid thirties. Uh, she suffered with lifelong depression uh, that started in her late teens, into her twenties, into her thirties. In her early teens, uh, she didn't have depression. But she had a ton of hormonal imbalances, tons of hormonal symptoms. She had heavy bleeding. She uh, would gain weight. She would have poor concentration. She would become irritable, um, moody, all of your typical PMS symptoms. So her doctor did what most doctors do. They prescribed her the pill. Right? So fast forward six years, she now began experiencing depression, began experiencing anxiety, gained more weight you know, from the pill, found herself more exhausted than ever before and began having weekly headaches. So now her doctor began prescribing Imitrex, which is again a medication often prescribed for headaches and migraines. And perhaps this sounds a lot like your story, but the more women that I work with, this seems to be common practice. Rather than doctors looking at the root cause of the problem, doctors prescribe pill after pill after pill. So remember what we just said a moment ago, the pill elevates sex hormone binding globulin and it lowers testosterone and lowers DHT. You can see here the levels of DHT that came back, and they were less than five. The range goes from five to 46, and her sex hormone binding globulin levels are 385.5, 385 
where the range is 24.6 to 122. All right, these are major problems. Because of the high sex hormone binding globulin, she suffers with fatigue, loss of libido, anxiety, depression, and it all makes sense and explains why we just don't, or why, I should say why, she's so tired and why she wants to sit on the couch all day long and has zero motivation, right? Um, another study here in Human Reproduction, 2014, titled The Effects of Oral Contraception on Testosterone in Healthy Women, a Systemic Review and Meta-Analysis. Here again showed that oral contraception, oral contraceptives, decrease total testosterone levels, they decrease free testosterone, and they increase sex hormone binding globulin concentrations. This is disastrous for women. Years down the road, this can cause things like heart disease. It can cause osteoporosis. It can cause strokes. It can cause weight gain. And so my recommendations would be that you get your sex hormone binding globulin levels tested. You have your total testosterone levels tested. You get your free testosterone levels tested to make sure that this hormone balance doesn't get out of control on you. All right. So that's the first problem that we see. The pill lowers testosterone. But are those problems only associated with the pill? What about other forms of oral contraceptives, right? What about, um, you know, things like the IUD or patches? Well, let's take a look at another study. This one is from Human Reproduction 2012, titled Oral Transdermal Vaginal Contraceptives Induce an Increase in Markers of Chronic Inflammation, Impaired Insulin Sensitivity. Very quickly, we see another problem emerges with hormonal-based contraceptives. From this study, not only does it point out that oral contraceptives cause problems, but we also see that the study points out that vaginal rings and IUDs, in addition to contraceptives, uh, in addition to contraceptive patches, cause chronic inflammation and impaired insulin sensitivity. Think about that for a moment. If you're a woman with PCOS, better known as polycystic ovarian syndrome, or a woman with endometriosis, or a woman with fibroids, the two things you don't want are inflammation and impaired insulin sensitivity. Because both of these will not only cause more PCOS, but will also cause depression and also anxiety. You see, blood sugar dysregulation and inflammation caused by pills and patches and IUDs are two of the most common denominators that we see in every chronic disease, especially anxiety and depression. In fact, it's so common that 50% of women who have PCOS suffer with depression and for these women, taking the pill can be the, the pushing point over the edge, right? It can be disastrous. One last thing I want you to be aware of when it comes to stopping the pill. You should now know that it can take months and sometimes even years for these sex hormone binding, uh, these sex hormone binding globin levels to come down into normal levels. That means you can continue to suffer with symptoms such as fatigue and libido problems and brain fog and chronic pain and blood sugar problems and depression for months after discontinuing the pill. So just be aware of that. You may be doing everything right, but you're just dealing with the consequences of these hormones being elevated and being so unbalanced. Now, just a quick recap. So far, I've showed you that the pill binds up testosterone. It causes inflammation. It causes blood sugar problems. Again, all potential cul culprits in the big picture of depression and anxiety. Let's talk now a little bit about the connection between hypothyroidism and depression. Right? When a woman takes the pill, right, the high levels of estrogen that are designed to block ovulation can increase thyroid binding globulin. And this can ultimately leave a woman in a low thyroid state, also known as hypothyroidism. Now, if you're a woman and you are convinced that your symptoms sound like a thyroid problem, but your doctor's told you that your thyroid's okay, everything is normal, don't worry about it, right? I highly recommend that you get a comprehensive thyroid panel done, including testing for uh, T3, total T3 levels, free T3 levels, reverse T3, as well as that thyroid binding globulin that we just talked about, right? Get those levels tested. And also, if I forgot to mention, I'd also recommend getting reverse T3 as well. All right, so earlier I mentioned the hormones in our body travel around, they hitch, hitch a ride uh, in these so-called taxi cabs. In fact, each hormone, whether it be cortisol or thyroid or estrogen or testosterone, all of the hormones in your body either share or have their own taxi cab. Estrogen, DHT, and testosterone all hitch a ride around the body by sex hormone binding globulin. Thyroid hormones hitch a ride around the body uh, by thyroid binding globulin, all right, thyroxin binding globulin as well. 
Another problem with birth control pills is that high levels of estrogen, like those found in the pill, also increase the number of thyroid taxi, clab, ta taxi cabs. So what happens is by taking the pill, we have an increase in thyroid binding globulin levels. And when you have high levels of thyroid binding globulin levels, all your hormones, again, will be bound up and attached to those taxi cabs. So this ultimately leaves you in a state of hypothyroidism. All while, if your doctor only tests your TSH levels and your T4 levels, those would appear to be normal. So what do you do if you suspect that there may be some connection here between the pill that you're taking and low thyroid function? Well, in this case, I highly recommend that you work with a certified functional medicine doctor who will run a complete thyroid panel, dig into uh, some of these potential causes that we're talking about, and of course, running tests that help identify where your body can best be supported. Now, if you've never heard of functional medicine uh, or you've never even heard of a comprehensive thyroid panel, I'll leave a link at the end of this video where you can learn more about functional medicine and more about thyroid testing that I've mentioned today. So far, we've talked about low testosterone. We've talked about uh, depression caused by the pill. We've talked about the pill causing inflammation. We've talked about blood sugar problems caused by the pill. And we talked about how low thyroid symptoms due to elevated thyroid binding globulin, again, caused by the pill, can lead to depression and anxiety. The other problem that we see here with birth control, problem number five, uh, and something I like to test for when working with women who have depression with hormonal imbalances, uh, is something called oxidative stress. Now, since most people have never heard of oxidative stress as it relates to depression and anxiety, let's talk about that for just a moment and just how oxidative stress affects the body, what it is, why it's important, how you test for it, and its connection uh, to that depression anxiety. First off, uh, oxidative stress is a destructive force on the cells in your body, and it happens when you don't have sufficient amounts of antioxidants due to a poor diet or poor absorption or uh, exposure to lots of toxins because you work in an environment that's loaded with toxins. But again, the underlying inflammatory condition in the body, right, is also another potential cause for that. So while that might not seem like a big deal, it's a huge problem to the integrity of your cells in your body. I like to use this illustration of an apple when explaining oxidative stress to my patients. You know, we've all seen that apple in the house sitting on our kitchen table, um, you know, for weeks or sometimes even months. And, you know, if you, as long as you don't really touch that apple and you don't disturb the outer skin of that apple, that apple stays fresh, right? It stays fresh and, and, and you know, preserved for several weeks um, and sometimes maybe even a month or two, right? But have you ever noticed that when you take a bite out of that apple, within just a few short minutes, that apple begins to turn brown? And if you let that apple or keep that apple on the kitchen table for a week, a month, longer than a month, it becomes really rotten. That's oxidative stress, right? But what happens in your body that oxidative stress is damaging the cells and causing disease at the cellular level. Now, one way we measure oxidative stress is by measuring lipid peroxidation. So if you take a look at this test, this was a test that I ran on the same patient that we just spoke of earlier. And what you'll notice is that her lipid peroxides are off the chart elevated. Now, this marker, coupled with some of the other markers that we often run uh, identifying oxidative stress, can be very, very important. Again, women who take birth control pills have higher levels of oxidative stress when compared to women who don't take them. This study that you see here also found that when these women supplemented with things like antioxidants, we saw that the level of oxidative stress decreased. Here's another study that I think deserves attention. Right? This study compared the different uh, contraceptive methods, so oral contraceptive, vaginal ring, and transdermal patch, and what the effects of those oral contraceptives were on Things like coenzyme Q10, vitamin E, glutathione levels, which again are, are very, very important antioxidants, right? Well, the reason why I show you this study is because it demonstrates and points out that all three methods of contraception, the pill, the patch, and the ring, all three forms significantly lowered the levels of antioxidant status. And now that you know that oxidative stress causes anxiety and depression, you can now see the association between the pill and depression and anxiety with that oxidative stress. Now, before we move on, I just want to show you three more studies here showing the link between oral contraceptives, oxidative stress, uh, and its connection to anxiety and depression. The first one here, oxidative stress and psychological disorders, um, current neuropharmacology is one study. Here's another study, markers of oxidative stress and neuroprogression in depression disorder, study number two. And study number three, 
uh, is depression associated with increased oxidative stress, a systematic review and meta-analysis, right? So here again, we have three studies showing that oxidative stress causes depression. So again, just as a recap, up to this point, I've showed you how the pill causes an increase in sex hormone binding globulin, leaving the body in a low androgen state. We showed you how uh, low androgens can cause depression. I've showed you how the pill increases thyroid binding globulin, leaving you in a low thyroid state, and how low thyroid or hypothyroidism is associated with depression. I've showed you how birth control pills, patches, and hormonal IUDs can affect blood sugar and insulin sensitivity, which we know are very much tied into depression and anxiety, as well as things like PCOS and endometriosis. I've also showed you a few studies here showing how the birth control pill causes oxidative stress, and how oxidative stress causes depression and anxiety. So another problem that we see related to the pill and depression, and I briefly mentioned this earlier in today's video, was that all forms of, of contraception that was studied, oral, transdermal, and uh, patches and, and uh, rings, all of them induce chronic inflammation and blood sugar problems. But when it comes to inflammation, again, we know that there's various vitamins that play a major role in regulating and keeping inflammation at bay and under control in our body. And you can see from this illustration here that just a few of the major vitamins that are key players in regulating inflammation. What you may not know is the connection that the pill has with certain nutritional deficiencies that are associated with this inflammation. Because the pill robs your body of many critical vitamins, things like zinc and selenium and magnesium, vitamin E, CoQ10, glutathione, we also see deficiencies of things like B6 and B12 and folate levels, which again are so critical to our methylation pathways, liver detoxification pathways, right? Problems with these key players will promote ongoing systemic chronic inflammation and changes to the immune system through nutrient depletion. So one of the markers among many that I often check for when I work with a patient that has a chronic health problem and we know or suspect inflammation is a problem is a marker called homocysteine. Now the big thing you should know about homocysteine is that more and more researchers are starting to look at depression not as a problem related to a serotonin deficiency, but rather a, uh, a problem where the brain becomes inflamed and being exposed to oxidative stress causing uh, the brain to begin to die, so nerve cells begin to die. And here is where, again, your nutritional status, your gut health, your methylation ability, liver detoxification uh, pathways become so critical. Various B vitamins play an important role in the metabolism or breaking down of homocysteine. Right? This is the result of an MTHFR status. If you've never heard of MTHFR, then just Google Dr. Hagmeyer MTHFR and inflammation and read some of the articles and perhaps even some of the other videos that I've done on this topic and on my website. So it's very important uh, for people with depression and anxiety, people with concussions, people with migraines, um, really just about any kind of disease problem affecting the brain, that you understand what your levels of homocysteine are. Now let me show you something. Here's a study from 2008. Uh, the study's uh, 2008 Journal of Psychiatric Research titled Depressive Symptoms May Explain Elevated Plasma Levels of Homocysteine in Females with Eating Disorders. Many studies have looked at this connection between homocysteine and depression and are confirming the link between depression and inflammation. As you can see in this study, this is something that definitely should grab your attention if you or a loved one is taking the pill and at the same time you suffer with depression and anxiety or migraines or some other mental health problem. If you're on the pill or any other form of contraception, again, rings, pills, and patches, you should be monitoring these homocysteine levels twice a year or every six months if they're elevated. You might be wondering, what's a good range for, for homocysteine? Well, I like to see homocysteine levels around seven. Now, if you've ever had this test done, you'll notice that sometimes LabCorp requests will have a range that goes anywhere from zero to 15. All right. But I'm going to be honest with you here. Uh, when we really dig into the research, optimal levels for homocysteine levels are around seven. And this should be your goal. If these levels are elevated, that's a sign of systemic inflammation in your brain and in your heart and in your blood vessels. And this is a very, very serious problem. If you have symptoms, again, like depression, anxiety, insomnia, if you do have high levels, the very next thing you want to do is get tested for what I mentioned earlier, which was that MTHFR gene. Again, we see this very common um, with people with thyroid problems, we see this very, very common with people with inflammation. So again, get these MTHFR levels tested. If you want more information on this, watch my three-part video series that I did 
on MTHFR, MTHFR where I explain what it is in simple language. Again, just simply Google Dr. Hagmeier MTHFR um, in simple language and that should pop up. All right. So if you look at this illustration showing the effects of oxidative stress, you can see why I believe so strongly in testing for oxidative stress as well as homocysteine levels. And I'll explain why these are connected. There are two more things I want you to know about the pill when it comes to depression and anxiety. Number one, birth control pills are known to disrupt tryptophan metabolism. Why is that important? Well, tryptophan is very important because tryptophan is needed to make two very important chemicals that I'm going to show you here and that probably that you've heard of. Number one is serotonin, right? That's your happy feel good uh, neurotransmitter. And number two is melatonin, right? When you feel sad or depressed or anxious, when you can't think straight, when you become irritable, you can't focus, one of the main neurotransmitters that's associated with these feelings is serotonin. When you can't sleep at night and you're tossing and turning and your legs are twitching and you're restless, your mind is racing, you can't slow down, perhaps you're reaching for those melatonin supplements. But remember that both serotonin and melatonin are made from tryptophan. And when you use birth control pills, the pill can disrupt your feel-good chemicals and disrupt the chemicals that regulate your sleep cycle. Here's just a quick illustration that shows how serotonin and melatonin are made from tryptophan. All right. And so as I bring today's video to a close, I want to leave you with one more way that the pill causes anxiety and depression. And this has a lot to do with copper levels. Right? Copper overload becomes an increasingly common problem. Right? We're seeing this more and more and more women the longer they're on birth control pills. Right? But part of this widespread use of uh, high copper levels comes down to the estrogen found in these oral contraceptives. Right? Other health conditions that are associated with copper overload include things like acne and allergies and candida, uh, which is a fungal overgrowth uh, in the body, hypothyroidism, anemia, hair loss, chronic fatigue, chronic pain, fibromyalgia, migraines, and even infertility. The reason that copper is linked with such a long and varied list of conditions is that copper is absolutely essential to the proper functioning of number one, your immune system, number two, your endocrine system, and number three, your nerve system. You see, copper is a cofactor for the enzyme which converts dopamine into your fight or flight hormones like adrenaline and noradrenaline. So if you look here at the dopamine pathway, when you have too much copper, let's say from the pill or a patch or a ring, you'll have more norepinephrine and more epinephrine, which is adrenaline, surging through your body, right? We've all heard of adrenaline. Too much adrenaline can cause feelings of agitation and anxiety and overstimulation and racing thoughts and restlessness and insomnia. In other words, it revs up the nerve system into a state of overdrive or that fight or flight response that you may have heard of, right? Those symptoms could be copper overload. A couple of things I want to share with you because you may be thinking that this only affects women who are using copper IUDs, right? And so a lot of women are very aware of IUDs and obviously concerned about copper IUDs. But that's not all I want you to know, right? Um, if we look at a study here from the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition, we see that elevated copper levels were found in all types of oral contraceptives. Not some, but in all users. Another study, Contraception 2013, shows that the pill increases copper levels to the point of causing oxidative stress. Now, we talked all about oxidative stress just a moment ago. So if you're a woman who is taking the pill and you're struggling with these symptoms, you might have copper overload. So again, take a look at some of these symptoms. If you can relate to these, do you really need an antidepressant or an anti-anxiety pill? Or do you think you may need to address copper toxicity, inflammation, oxidative stress, maybe homocysteine levels, maybe uh, imbalances in tryptophan levels, and all of the other problems that we've talked about? One of the problems associated with the pill, and HRT for that matter, that I'm sure you've heard about, is this concept of estrogen dominance, right? We see this estrogen dominance showing up in women who uh, have been on hormone replacement therapy, they've been on birth control pill, and so on and so forth. And we know that estrogen dominance has a connection to copper in the sense that estrogen dominance causes a woman to hold on to her copper, right? It's called copper retention. And so this accumulation of copper in the body, years and years and years perhaps, can eventually result in this toxic overload of this copper toxicity. So if you made it this far in this video, I want to congratulate you, right? I know this video is a little bit longer than usual, 
I know this is a long one, but there's just so much information that I wanted to share with you, right? And so I also know it can be tough uh, when you have depression, right? Most conventional doctors really are not interested in truly doing the, the investigative and detective workup that patients need uh, in order to get well and to solve these chronic health issues, and especially these mental health issues. If you're suffering with depression, anxiety, or you need help with balancing your hormones, visit my website. Click on the Start Here button. Tell us a little bit more about your problem, the kind of help you're looking for, your goals. And from there, my team will take care of the rest of it for you. Mental health is a very serious health problem that affects you, all the people around you, and the people that care about you and love you. And I truly believe that there are answers out there. There are solutions. But the solution won't be found until you investigate the root cause and understand how this is connected. You have to do some digging. Life is such a gift, and no one should have to struggle with depression and anxiety. Please don't give up. Hang in there until you find the right doctor. Until next time, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer. Take care.